Welcome back to Enjoy the Ride Horsemanship. Today we're going to groom our horse prior to riding. It's important that we groom our horse before we tack him up so that nothing on his skin would irritate him uh, once we put the pad, the saddle, the girth, and the bridle on. So the first thing I'm going to do is share some of the brushes with you. I have in my hand five different curry combs. So a curry comb is used to loosen up dirt and debris that is maybe on your horse's coat or under the hair. So if he has rolled in the mud and it's dried on, these are really great to get the mud off. Not every horse loves the curry comb and sometimes you have to experiment with different ones until you find one that your horse likes. Um, so this is a metal curry that is pretty common. This is a rubber curry with relatively large bristles. Um, I have a couple of rubber curries here that have really soft bristles. I like those for the face particularly. And then I have this silly little one that's shaped like uh, a flower. And Trigger actually likes this one best of all, so I'm going to use that one on him. But the, uh, the general idea is the same regardless of what kind of curry you're using, is you're just going to do little small circles on the horse's coat. And it's bringing to the surface all of the dirt and debris and mud and things like that that might be on his coat. So I'm just going to do that across his entire body. I'm kind of staying in the areas that have a lot of meat. Um, down here low on his legs, there's really not a lot of uh, flesh there. It's mostly bone and skin and tendons and ligaments, so it wouldn't be very comfortable to use the curry on those parts. Um, and I also wouldn't use this hard plastic curry on his face because that would be relatively uncomfortable there as well but we have the rubber curry specifically for the face so i'm just currying all of the meaty parts and i'm going to go around behind trigger um, when i go to the other side of my horse i have a couple of options i could go in front of his face um, but then i end up ducking under the cross ties a bunch of times um, and in the course of grooming and tacking your horse, you might have to go back and forth multiple times. That might get a little tiresome. So the safe way to pass behind a horse is to just make sure your hand is on him, stay really close, and just pat him all the way around. As long as he knows you're there, he shouldn't do anything purposefully to, to kick out at you. Um, and if you stay very, very close, then even if there was an accident, like he thought there was a fly on him, he wouldn't really be able to get you. So I'm flipping his mane over to the other side, and I'm going to curry this side of his neck. I'm kind of doing small circles, putting a little bit of pressure into it. Um, horses don't mind a little bit rougher uh, grooming than we would probably appreciate. I know I wouldn't care for that metal curry on my skin, but the horses seem to actually like it. Okay, I'm going to come back around, patting trigger on the butt as I come around. So now all this, uh, the dirt and loose hair and things are brought to the surface, I want to whisk them away. So I have a relatively firm bristled brush. This one's got a little bit of um, strength to, to the bristles. So I'm just going to use these. I think I'll start on this side since I've already moved his mane over. I'm going to use this in short, hard strokes in the direction of the hair growth. Oh, do you like that trigger? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think I found the good spot. Um, so all I'm doing is just brushing away the debris that the curry comb brought up. And it is important to look at your horse while you're brushing. Pay attention to his reactions. If he likes a brush, he might lean into it. If he doesn't like a brush, he might pin his ears or shrink away from it. Um, that's how we learn what our horses like and what they don't like. They all have different preferences, just like people do. Move the mane back over to its normal side. And do the same thing on this side, head to tail, little short strokes. I've got my lead rope over his neck. I've uh, just thrown it up there so that it's not dragging on the floor. I could unclip it since he's in the cross ties and set it aside, or I can leave it right where it is and just kind of work around it. That's entirely up to you. 
but I do like to keep it off the floor. Okay, so the next brush, this is one that I don't use a whole lot, and unfortunately you can't feel the difference, but this one is much softer than the one I just used. Um, this is sort of a polishing type of brush. If you were going to a show and you wanted to give him a really slick, sleek, shiny appearance, this brush would uh, polish nicely. Um, we're not going to a show today, but it probably feels good anyway, so I'll do a quick swipe with that. It is summer in North Carolina, so poor Trigger is awfully sweaty. There's uh, not a whole lot of good that grooming is going to do to help that. We need a good hose bath, don't we, Trig? Yes. And for this one, I'm just going to move the mane momentarily with my hand. There we go. Trigger is resting one of his back feet. That's pretty normal uh, when you see a horse stand with one toe up like that in the back. Um, they're just resting one hind leg and then the other. We rarely see them do that in the front. If you see a horse standing that way with a front leg, that's usually an indication that something is hurting them. Um, but that in the back is normal. Um, the next thing we need is our face brush. So you may have a face brush that is uh, small and bristly like this one, but smaller. Um, I tend to prefer the curry for the face. This is a rubber curry, and most of the horses really like the way it feels on their face. Um, I like to do little circles right here between the eyes, and sometimes they'll start to push back against it. Our guys just had dinner, so I might be able to use it to get some uh, food off of his face. Yeah, we've got a little bit of dinner down here on our nose. We can go gently above and around the eyes. Sometimes uh, we get a little bit of tearing here, especially during the summer if there's some allergies or some bugs bothering them. So you can get the little tear streaks off. Uh, he's got a little mud here. He must have laid down and put his head in the mud. Um, one thing I can do, I'm going to reach under and I just unclipped the throat latch. That just sort of helps me lift up the halter and get to the cheek a little bit better. You get the little ears. Yeah, not too bad. Let me get this cheek. Okay, and then I will clip that back on. And I'm going to move on to my mane and tail brush. So most grooming buckets will have a mane and tail brush that looks like, or maybe it actually is, a human hairbrush. Um, I'll admit I've used this one on myself um, after I used it on him. Ew. Um, so his mane lands on his right side. Every horse uh, has a side where their mane predominantly lands. I'm just going to do his forelock really quick. And then I'll stand over here and do his mane. So Trigger has quite a lot of mane. He's got a very long mane. So do it just like you do your own hair. If you have long hair, you know that you might take small sections, small chunks of it at a time. Kind of start from the bottom and work your way up if there's lots of knots. And if you have a lot of time, if you have some extra time, you can braid your horse's mane. That's awfully fun. I don't know how much Trigger appreciates the bows and things. And once you've brushed his mane, got all the tangles out of there, you can move to the tail. So I will say that when you brush the tail, it is smart to stand beside the horse rather than in front of him, or excuse me, behind him. Um, so I'm going to come to the back, and I'm going to take his tail and hold it out to the side. So even though I trust Trigger not to kick me on purpose, if there was a fly or if something came in the back door of the barn and startled him, he might... Um, step back or do a little kick and I would just rather be over here out of out of that zone right behind him. He also has a blind spot directly in front and directly behind um, as all horses do because their eyes are on the side of their heads they don't see very well directly in front of their face or directly behind their bottom so those are places where we probably don't want to hang out for very long if we don't have to. Um, the last thing I want to show you is how to pick the hooves. So I'm going to reposition for that 
so you can see what I'm doing with the hooves. And I'm going to show you both Trigger and Buddy, because we have one horse with uh, no shoes, barefoot, and Buddy wears shoes. So we'll, we'll see a little bit of both um, how to clean the hooves. So the last thing we're going to do before we saddle our horse is check his hooves. Um, cleaning the hooves daily is an important part of our grooming regimen. It's um, hygiene, for starters. Um, getting the manure and mud out of the horse's hoof can help prevent fungal infections. Um, we also want to check before we ride and make sure there's nothing in his hoof that might hurt him while we're riding, like a rock stuck in his foot. You wouldn't want to walk around with a rock in your shoe, and neither does he. So I'm going to show you the position that I use to clean his hooves. Um, and then we'll show you the actual hoof itself and how we're cleaning the hoof. So when I pick up a front hoof, I stand with my shoulder next to his, facing his rear. And whichever hand is closer to him, I'm going to run that hand down the back of his leg and ask for the foot. So when I'm on his left, I would be using my left hand to lift his foot and my right hand to pick the hoof. When I go to the other side, I will have to switch hands. So it's a little bit of practice uh, when you're using your non-dominant hand, but you'll get used to it. So I'm going to run my hand down the back of his leg and give a little squeeze. And when he lifts the foot, I'm just going to cup it with my hand. And I'm cupping the actual hoof, um, the hard hoof wall, as opposed to the hairy part of his leg. So when I hold the hairy part of his leg, you see the foot falls away. But when I grab the actual um, hoof wall, now the sole of the foot is tipped up towards me where I can see it. So I'm going to do a little clean here. And I like to go around my horse um, in a circle. So if I let this front foot down, rather than going and doing the other front foot, I'm going to come straight to this rear. And you see Trigger's already picking it up for me. He knows. Um, because I do them in the same order every time, he knows what's happening. So same thing, I'm going to hold the hoof, uh, not the hairy part of the leg. With the hind leg, it bends a little differently because he has hocks in the back where he's got um, knees in the front. So this is actually getting a little hard on my back holding it. I'm going to step forward and let his leg rest on my leg. Now it's hands free and it's not hurting my back. And then I can clean the hoof. This one's actually already pretty clean. And then I would go around, pat him as I go. Do the other hind. Sometimes they kind of pull their back leg up and you have to wait a second for them to relax. They're just sort of stretching it out. Let it down gently, watch where your toes are, and then finish the circle with the last front foot. So here we have the bottom of an unshod hoof. So this is a barefoot horse with no shoe. Um, he's got a little bit of mud here on the sole of his foot. Um, so I'm going to pick that away and then show you the anatomy of the foot, how I did that. So this is the hoof pick up close. It's got a little brush on one end, pick on the other. So I'm going to find this little groove right here, and you'll see in a moment when the mud is out of the way that there is a triangular part right here called the frog. So this is the sole of his foot. This is the frog. The frog is uh, squishy. It's sort of a shock absorber. That's softer tissue. The sole of his foot is a little harder. And this right here is called the collateral groove. So to pop the mud out, the, the easiest thing to do is start here at the corner of the collateral groove and just follow that frog all the way down and it'll pop right out. Um, you can use the brush to brush things away. And we'll go show you a horse with a shoe as well because that's a little bit different technique. Um, so he wears a shoe around uh, the hoof wall. So when we clean a shod hoof, Sometimes we get a little bit more stuff right here in the sole area. So we would start the same way we did with the unshod hoof, going down the collateral groove and popping out any large chunks of muck that might be there. And then we're going to finish by going around the edge of the shoe. So that'll pop out any remaining stuff that's in there. And then you can brush it away just like we did with the unshod hoof. If you're curious how the horseshoes go on, um, the farrier will remove the shoe about every six to eight weeks, trim the hoof, and re reset the shoe. Um, our barefoot horses get trimmed as well, but obviously they don't get shoes put on. 
Um, so the keratin in the hoof is exactly the same as our fingernails. It doesn't hurt them when we trim that. So the nails actually go into that outer hoof wall, the keratin part, so the horse can't feel the nails. Um, so they place the shoe here, and the nails go in from this side. You can see the nail heads here. And then they come out on the top of the hoof. You can see on the top of the hoof where the nails came out. And they get clipped off and then clenched. We fold the end of the nail down so that it kind of folds over and hooks onto the hoof. And that's what holds it on.